Hey everybody, welcome to the Big Llama Show. I'm the Big Llama, thank you so much for joining me. We're doing a follow-up video. I had posted a video about two months ago asking should you buy the Nakamichi 9.2.4 system, the, the Ultra system, and I got a lot of hits on that video and a lot of questions. So I decided to do this follow-up video just so I can answer some of those questions and give a little bit more insight than what I did on my comments. All right, let's get right to the video. Here we go. Everybody, welcome back to the Big Llama Show. I'm the Big Llama. Thank you again so much for joining me. This is a follow-up video to my Should You Buy Nakamichi Shockwave System. Um, it's going to be a quick video, just a couple of Q&As. I just want to make sure I elaborate a little bit. But before we get to that, make sure you like this video. Hit the subscribe. When you subscribe, come remember the Llama Nation. Hit that bell notification so you know when we post videos. If you like the shirts that I wear, hit that uh, link in the description for Rigley Rue Designs. Get your custom shirts. All right. Let's get right to it. Let's talk about the Nakamichi Shockwave 9.2.4. All right, just as a recap, the Nakamichi Shockwave 9.2.4 is a soundbar system that has a lot of components. Now, it has one giant uh, soundbar in the middle. It's got four satellite surround speakers and two ginormous subwoofers. Um, this is a big system. It cranks the decibel levels and it makes any movie experience enhanced by by a thousand. Uh, I have demoed this now with a couple of people who were skeptic about it and they loved the system. Now, is the system too powerful? That is the first question I ask. Is it too much for a small room? Um, I have a 12 by 12 room or 12 by 12 uh, space. It's my living room area. And I will tell you, yes it is powerful it is um a lot to, for that room to handle but that's the great thing about it i can listen to it as loud as i want or as low as i want um the one thing i will say is it does take a little bit of time to mess with the settings um and, you know you can turn up the side speakers you can turn up the center channel um, you can even adjust the subwoofer level. I would definitely say do not max out your subwoofer. Do not make that subwoofer go to 10. Uh, I keep it somewhere between 7 and 8. And 8 when I really want to feel that impact. And 7 when I want like the theater quality type, uh, you know, experience. Um, so that is my, my recommendation. And that's the first question is, you know, is it too much for a small room? It, I would say yes and no, but it doesn't matter. If it means it's too much, it means you have volume control. You have a, you can go and max it out to a great capacity and still not reach its full potential. There was some question about the Dolby Atmos and how it's simulated. Now, I know that is it has upward firing speakers. But if, you, if you aim the speakers, so the satellite speakers, for example, you can have them standing straight up, you can have them laying down, or you can have them in a dipole, which is two speakers connected to each other. And Nakamichi does a great job of providing you with uh, layouts and with uh, diagrams on where you should put these speakers. I have an uneven roof. So my roof is not flat. It has sort of an arc or curve uh, that goes straight up. So on a high ceiling like mine, laying those speakers flat did not give me a better result. I preferred to have them sitting straight up facing me like traditional surround sound speakers would. Um, Nakamichi recommends there are two rears that face the front, so they should be behind you. Um, behind you on the couch facing this way but not directly at your earshot and then there are two side speakers and those should be firing somewhere near your earshot and that will create that surround sound Dolby Atmos experience now the front of the bar I do know um, has it, it comes at an angle and what that does is it does fire upwards but I do find that it's better for the clear discussion or clear talking uh, dialogue and I don't necessarily hear a whole lot of sound coming up um, but but again that's um, that was my explanation in terms of the ceiling height and how you should lay the speakers uh, I have a picture on how I do mine I'll demo it here and you can see exactly how mine is set up in the living room there was a question about should I buy a brand new or should I buy it refurbished 
and I have not had any experience with refurbished equipment for Nakamichi. I have bought other refurbished items, other refurbished electronics, and usually I don't have a problem with them other than there are minor cosmetic issues and some of them, like if you go to Best Buy or one of those retailers and they have an open box item, usually there's a blemish um, because it was transported or there was a damage when in transport and that's usually okay. For the Nakamichi system, I do know that they have a certified um, sort of refurbishment department or um, that, that releases it and it resells them and it's at a significantly lower cost I wasn't willing to make that risk I was very afraid of the quality first of all I was afraid of the name Nakamichi I wasn't that familiar and so when I went to purchase mine I purchased mine brand new um, and there was a refurbished option which would have saved me hundreds of dollars um, but I just felt like I didn't, I, I couldn't trust it. And so I went with a brand new system. Can you go with refurbished? I'm sure you can, but I do not have experience with that. And I don't know how it will be. If you are or somebody who's had it refurbished, hit us up in the comments. Let us know what you thought about the refurbished system. I've seen many of them sold online and no, not a lot of complaints, but at the same time, I wasn't one of those people. Another question I get asked a lot is, is it good for music? And I've said this, I think, on the first video, and I'll say it again. No, it is not a system if you're looking for a secondary stereo to play music in your home. Uh, it doesn't have... Now, if you're sitting in, in the, the earshot, if you're within the living room area and you're listening to music or music on the TV, watching a music video, or now with Apple TV and the uh, Apple Music, they have that Atmos surround um, or Adobe Atmos music. Um, it works and it sounds pretty good, um, but I definitely do not recommend this if you're looking for a sound system for music. First of all, to connect the music, you have to connect it through Bluetooth, so that connection is a little bit less quality. If you run it off an Apple TV or some kind of um, you know streaming box, that may work a little bit better and the quality may be better, but I, I'm step, when I step away from the, from the earshot of the speakers, it does not sound that good. It doesn't sound good at all. Um, so if you're buying this for music, absolutely not. I do not recommend it. If you're buying it for movies and movie viewing and watching surround sound uh, quality, IMAX quality type stuff, yes. Definitely recommend it. It is amazing. It blows you away. But from a music perspective, no way. Now, every system will have its pro and its con. And this one has a couple of cons, and I'd like people to know about them. Just so you know that this is a fair review from me. Um, the center speaker, the center channel, um, while it produces crystal clear voice tone it is a little bit flat you're going to have to turn up the treble a little bit in order to get a, just something a little bit different because at least for my ear i i don't like it ultra flat um in the middle of a movie and when you're when you're in the middle of an action sequence you can tell no difference it sounds amazing but sometimes when there's less action and more dialogue i find myself having to either turn up the treble and turn down a little bit the center channel because it can be overpowering um, but it doesn't take away from the system but i thought that's just something that i didn't like uh, about the system and I wanted to be fair and honest about my review. So that's one thing I would say. Um, the other thing I would say about the particular system is that you shouldn't use it for a regular TV broadcast. Um, I know that a lot of people have surround sound systems or soundbar systems connected to their TVs and they pretty much run the soundbar as their TV volume for all things. Um, I would say when you're watching broadcast television or live television or streaming live, let's say on a YouTube TV, uh, Apple TV, or even some of the apps on, app, uh, on the Apple TV service, um, they don't give you Dolby Atmos or Dolby Digital or any of those high-end um, you know, sound uh, atmosphere or sound mixes. So you're getting a very raw and a very like muffled sound and it you can hear it and it is clear but it just does not have the same effect so when i'm watching uh regular tv or when i'm watching regular tv i turn off the soundbar altogether and i use my regular tv uh speakers there's no need for it i don't need loud bass when i'm watching a commercial for uh whatever the new drug is or whatever so um it's the same thing now i would tell you that if you're looking for a system that's going to run you know everything um you know your tv movies music this is not the system it is strictly for movies uh and there's some tv and you know experiences you have now i will say this and this one thing i said in my review earlier was um concerts 
uh, plays like Hamilton on Disney Plus, those have a great Atmos track and it just sounds like things are, are, are right there, like if you're in the theater. So I would tell you that that's a great viewing experience if you're watching a concert, a uh, you know musical, um, you know something high energy like that. This system was built for that. Now let's talk about the connections. The connections are very, very important. Um, the way that I have mine set up, and this is just my setup, is I have everything running through my TV. My TV does have an ER connection, so it does have a pretty advanced connection where I can get, uh, I am getting Dolby Atmos because the system is registering it, but I know there's some loss, uh, sort of lossy Atmos is what somebody said, and I don't know what that means, but I I'm assuming that there is less quality, it's not as, as pure in the signal. So what Nakamichi recommends is that you connect things directly to the sound bar and then run a connection to your TV. Uh, I have done that with my Blu -ray, my U, um, UHD Blu-ray player, and that works amazingly. Even crappy Blu-rays who have really bad tracks um, sound amazing. And so again, um, it does help. Now again, I'm running the Apple TV um, through the TV, and then from the TV into the Nakamichi system, and the Atmos tracks when I watch any of the Avengers movies or Ready Player One or Saving Private Ryan or any of these big, big sound movies that have Atmos tracks sounds amazing. And I even tested it. I'm, unfortunately, it, it, putting it on a video does not give do it justice, but I tested uh, playing the actual 4K UHD uh, Blu-ray um, of Saving Private Ryan and then watching it off of Apple TV. Um, you know, direct Dolby Atmos track. And so I did find a slight difference, obviously in the video quality, because it's not streaming. Um, and there was a little bit more crispness when it came to the sound, but not a demonstrable difference where you're going, oh my God, I can definitely tell the difference. Because I was looking for it, I found it. But honestly, if I was watching one in one version or the other, I probably would not have noticed. And it was so freaking loud, and it was so clean in terms of the sound and the violence and everything that I really, really couldn't tell. So um, honestly, um, that is something that is more of a preference. I, I, for me, because I use it as a regular TV um, through my Apple TV, I don't want it connected directly to the soundbar because I want the ability to turn it off and turn it back on. All right, well, that's my follow-up to uh, my original Nakamichi video. Uh, I still remain the same. I, you know, months after I've had the system, I cannot, I cannot tell you enough that it was the best investment I've made for sound quality. Once again, I want to make sure full disclosure, I am not paid by Nakamichi. I am not a Nakamichi rep. I am just simply a, a movie fan who bought this system out of a lot of research and I love it. I would recommend it to anybody who loves movies and wants that home theater experience. Listen, with all these movies being streamed directly to, to home at the same time as the movies, I found myself wanting to watch it at home more than I want to go to the movies. And I'm a big theater purist. I think you should go to the theater and enjoy it in that experience. But there's a couple of movies now that I've watched in my home that I have enjoyed and thought, oh my God, just it just brings me to another level. So, should you buy the Nakamichi uh, Shockwave 9.24 Ultra? Yes, definitely buy it. I would recommend it. I'm glad I bought it. Um, you can buy step-down systems. You can buy the 7.2 uh, point two and the 7.2.4 which has less satellite speakers uh, one subwoofer uh, versus two so on and so forth so there are different tier levels but if you want the full capacity full experience you can't go wrong with the the ultra which is the 9.2.4 and I do know that the 7 Point one, point two, uh, which has one subwoofer versus two, does a pretty decent job. But again, for me, two subwoofers is the way to go. All right, that's my uh, that's my follow up to the video. Uh, please hit me in the comments. Let me know what your questions are. Let me know if you bought a Shockwave. If you love the system, if you don't like it, tell me what you do and what you don't like about it. I'd be so interested to know. Make sure you like this video, hit the subscribe button so you become a member of the Lama Nation, and hit that bell notification so you know when we post new content. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm the Big Llama. This is the Big Llama Show. Peace out.
Shit, I tell her, baby, you're the one for me. Never two unless you're telling me you feel it too.